Hello, welcome to my How to Use Sketchbook Quick Tip series. This is a series where I will show you quick and easy tips that will help you on your journey learning Sketchbook. If you would like a longer, more comprehensive and in-depth look at these same tips, you can follow the link above, which is a longer video of these very same tips. Otherwise, if you don't have a lot of time, these quick tips are for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy! This last quick tip is about the perspective grids that come with Autodesk Sketchbook. It's not a full in-depth how-to about using them because I don't use them a lot myself, but I do show you how they work and you can decide for yourself if they're something you might want to use or not. So here we go. This is something that was added in the last few months. We can turn this on here and I will just give you a quick overview. I don't have a ton of experience with these just because I don't draw as many straight lines. I like curvy lines and shapes. Uh, but these are very handy for just getting down some basic lines so you can, you know, if you want to do buildings and in, in more architecture type images. These can at least help guide you so you're not just trying to eyeball it and guess where your vanishing points are. So if you don't know a lot about perspective there's probably several videos online about it but basically you have your most simplest form which is the one vanishing point. And now with this, you can move it around, you can spin it. So let's say you want this middle line here that's slightly lighter blue, that is your vanishing point, or that is your horizon line. And then the blue line on it, everything disappears or angles towards that as it moves away from you. So maybe you're doing comic book and you want, you know, to make it look like your camera's tilted a bit. You know, you want to force perspective, you want to give it some extreme angles you can do that um, so what you do here you can adjust the size and where your if you just grab the center point here that's how you can move it around you grab the green ones to change the shape and this one to this little circle one here to move it around to, to spin it uh, you can also adjust by doing this, this middle one, the customized grid. You can add more lines to it. You can change the opacity so it's not distracting. But as you can see here now, if I go to try to draw on it, let me get my pencil out, let me get black here, and then if I just start drawing it I'm like well eh, my lines are so crooked I can't get a nice straight line oh and there's a building here and it should go like that and here's the ground the street level right here and maybe these are storefronts and you want this to kind of come out a little so maybe it's got an awning or a sign area And you're just like, uh, it looks all sketchy and ugly. So what you can do, and then if you accident, oops, I exit, oh dang it, now I move the whole thing, right? So it has this lock here. So once you get everything set up the way you like it, tap this little lock button up here, and it'll lock it in place. So now at least it won't move if you accidentally, you know, go over one of those areas. Now, 
my lines are still not very straight. I'm not good at drawing straight lines. My hands shake sometimes. So how do you fix that? Well, there's this little magnet button here. You can make sure it's on. And now, no matter where you draw, now it's very important where you place your pencil to start with because that's where it will use the location and where the vanishing point should go from there. So you can't draw real sketchy. You have to be very careful. See how it's, because of where I placed it back there, it's not lining up perfectly with that line. But that's okay because this is just a guide. But now, because I'm going down, I can't, if I move side to side, nothing happens without lifting my pencil. Now if I lift my pencil, it will change again. So you need to be very careful. You know, if I move and I'm over here, oops, that's not where I wanted. You have to make sure you line things up. Now, I believe the last time I played with this, uh, if you have more grid lines, it has more things to snap to. It has more lines to snap to, so you know, you want to just sort of, you don't want to be sketchy, see? You don't, otherwise it makes your lines look a little hairy. Now this one, it seems to be doing a better job uh, than the last time I played with this. So they either fixed something or it's just because this is the simplest version of a grid that you can have. So the other grids, let me just quick give you a rundown of them. The second one is two vanishing points. We'll turn off the lock. So this again to rotate your horizon line. Now if you don't know much about this, about perspective drawing, what the two point vanishing does is let's say you are on a street corner looking at the building right in front of you and the building goes off to two different streets. So if you think of this line right here, where this is going up and down, that is the corner. And so now you have two vanishing points. And you get this nice little arrow showing you where it is if you have to, if you have to go off your page because of the angles. You need them a little bit closer. There. So now if I hit lock, it's not going to move. I can start drawing. Here is my make it thicker corner. Here's the bottom of the box for the building and the top. See now let's say I want to draw up here. I could still do that. Oh wait, what happened? There we go. So it doesn't just have to be on the grid at all times. Oh now see it kind of switched and went down, so it's not quite what I intended. But you get the idea. So this is really good for, let's say you have a checkered pattern on your ground, you know? That's really complicated to try to eyeball it. So that's kind of nice. Put in your windows. Oops, that one didn't go where I wanted, so I hit undo. Make sure I'm angling it the right way. So it really has a lot to do with how you place your pencil and try not to lift your lines. Now this is just to get the basic shape down. It's not gonna be a good idea to now, oh, okay, I want all these little details in here and, and stuff, you know, it's, it's not gonna really let you do that. You can turn off the snapping and maybe, okay, I need this curvy area here and maybe there's a nice little decoration up here above the window. You know, so, so you just, I mean, it's not going to do it for you. You still have to have some knowledge and see some of it, imagine it correctly for yourself to some extent. But this is, this is nice for a guide. So that's the two vanishing points. Now, three-point perspective is a little bit more complicated, especially the way this grid looks. But... I played around with it. Now this is, let's say you are in New York or any other big city that has very tall buildings and you 
are standing. Let's make these a little bit more extreme. You are standing on a street corner. So these blue ones are your vanishing points again. And this is your actual grid, the green ones. So you are not only having, you're on a street corner looking up at a giant building. You have your two different streets going off in different directions towards the horizon line. So you got the corners, but it's also very tall. So it's disappearing as it goes up into the sky and it gets thinner. So now if we lock this and we start drawing, we've got our corner. See, I started in a funny position, so I'm going to do that. We've got your corner. We've got the street level lines. And then we've got the far lines on the other side of this rectangle or whatever you want to call it, square shape. So these should actually go the other way because there, like that, there. So it gives you, you know, some really interesting forced perspective kind of looks. Okay. Now let's say you're like, oh, this grid is in my way, but I don't want to lose it. You can just turn it on and off. Let's see if they still work. I haven't ever tried that before. Yeah, so, you know, you can just start drawing, but you still have to be wary of where you're placing your lines. And it's still just following. It's not going any, you know, which way. So you just have to, that one was weird. See, so sometimes it's, it's a little bit finicky about how you're placing your, your pencil what it thinks you're trying to achieve and do and you know but it works it's good great for a guide we'll turn that back on this one middle one is to customize all of the lines Maybe you don't want as many and this middle one is crazy okay let's turn off that so we get our points let's bring this in I'm gonna bring this up this is if you just want like I don't know, maybe it's a crazy space battle and you need some straight lines for your, your ships and uh, I don't even know where the, here they are. You have all your different, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this one. Obviously this long one is your, your horizon line, but what does it do for yeah, it's the same customizing points, but let's lock it and just see. So you can have one here and one there, and that one wants to go that way. I'm having trouble getting it to go down at an angle here. Can't really see what I'm hitting, but there. I have to be maybe on this side of this point to go this direction. So that's interesting. And if I'm on the top part, it wants to go up. And this one, same thing. Depends what side you're on. So those are good for just, I don't know, something crazy. Something that, that isn't just a box. All right. Um, something else you can play around with to try to get, like, an idea of how it works. So let's say you have a building you want to create. We'll go into my photos. We'll get this one. Okay, we'll make this bigger. Still want to make it bigger, so I hit done and then hit the transform again. Then I can stretch it out even more. It's like it has a limit on how much you can stretch it each time. Let's put that under the layer now we can bring our grid and let's say so this one's a two point so you can play around and like bring buildings in and just see if you can line things up so we got the corner of the building right here let's bring this bigger so we'll put that here 
and then it goes off your horizon line must be about here there isn't really one in this image let's bring that away so you can play around with trying to line things up here maybe it's more of a three point because of the camera angle So this middle line's not going to line up exactly with both of these because this is inset a little further. Okay, let's let's bring this up here. We'll line it up with the bottom of the inside part of the building. That might be easier. See it changes when I change one. So maybe it should be one of these other lines. It's kind of weird. It's probably a bit of there. Wait. Okay. That's probably it right there. So now let's say you wanted to practice drawing this. Let's make this disappear a little bit so we can see our lines. Why do I still? There we go. Now, strangely, it's not letting me draw that top line. It's just there. It's kind of acting strange. See, now, if you're trying to draw lines that are too close together, I notice that's where it seems to have some issues. See, now, it doesn't want to let me draw that bottom edge. So maybe our horizon line needs to be higher. There, that seems to work a little bit better. Yeah, so it, it really depends where your horizon lines are. This is a very weird camera angle, so it doesn't seem to line up perfectly, but... Weird that it doesn't want to give me this straight line. There we go. It really depends where you're putting your pencil. So use these as your guides. I can't really do that curve but but don't use them as your only options because let's see let's give it more dense and see if that helps us a little or maybe it makes it harder yeah see it wants to be closer to the lines in some cases oh if you have to erase something you need to literally turn the grid off because otherwise it just wants to follow the grid line and it, you might not be able to erase it the way you want. So yeah, just just kind of use it as a guide, not as the only way to draw it because some of it might act a little goofy. You know, and if you have lines that don't follow those grid lines, you can always bring your ruler in. Oops. Here we go. Oops, I'm still an eraser there. You know, and just put these in. So, you know, do what feels comfortable and what makes sense to you. So, there. That's using the perspective grids. That was a how to use Autodesk sketchbook quick tip. Be sure to like and subscribe for more as I will have more to come. Thanks for watching and stay creative.